Ever wondered how Tape Yara compared to other pterosaurs? Let's journey back to a time when the skies were dominated by these ancient flyers, the first vertebrates to achieve powered flight. In this prehistoric era, spanning from the late Triassic to the end of the Cretaceous, the variety of pterosaurs was truly astonishing, from the small Nemecalopterus to the gigantic Quetzalcoatlus. Amid this diverse congregation of winged reptiles, one pterosaur stands out among this diverse group, and that's Tapayara. Enter Tapayara, a pterosaur that was truly one of a kind. Originating from what is now known as Brazil, this fascinating creature soared the prehistoric skies during the Cretaceous period. Tapajara, a medium-sized pterosaur, boasted a wingspan of approximately 14 feet. Yet its size isn't what sets it apart. The real showstopper is its unique and elaborate crest. A large flat plate of bone towering from its skull gave Tapayara an unmistakable look. Scientists speculate that this crest played a role in various functions from mating displays to thermal regulation. Now let's take a moment to appreciate Tapayara's habitat. This pterosaur dwelled in coastal regions, likely swooping over lagoons and prehistoric seas, searching for its next meal. Its sharp beak was perfect for snatching up fish and small marine invertebrates. With such distinctive features, how does Tapajara stack up against other pterosaurs? Time to pit Tapajara against its contemporaries. First off, let's talk size. Tapajara was a medium-sized pterosaur with a wingspan of around 11 feet. That's impressive, but it's dwarfed by the likes of Quetzalcoatlus, the giant of the skies which boasted a wingspan up to 33 feet. But remember, size isn't everything. In terms of flight abilities, Tapajara was a master of the air. With its large, broad wings, it could glide smoothly for long distances, just like the Pteranodon. However, its more compact size gave it an edge in maneuverability, allowing it to nimbly navigate through forests and cliff faces. Now let's talk adaptations. Tapiara had a unique crest on its head, unlike anything seen in Pteranodon or Quetzalcoatlus. This crest, made of soft tissue and bone, might have been used for display similar to a peacock's tail feathers. It's a flashy statement saying, look at me. But the real game changer was Tapayara's beak. Unlike the sharp spear-like beaks of many pterosaurs, Tapayara's beak was short and hook-shaped, perfect for snatching up fish and crustaceans from the water's surface. It's a great example of how adaptation leads to survival. So, as we can see, Tapayara held its own against other pterosaurs. Not only did it survive, but it thrived carving out its own niche in the diverse world of ancient flyers. But what really sets Tapahara apart from other pterosaurs? Well, let's dive right in. Unlike many of its airborne relatives, Tapahara boasted a remarkable crest on its head. This crest, shaped like a tall, backward-pointing sail, wasn't just for show. Scientists believe it may have been used for thermoregulation or even as a sign of dominance during mating displays. Moreover, Tapajara's beak was a marvel of natural engineering. It was robust and curved, perfect for a diet that likely included fish, fruit, and small land animals. This feeding versatility might have given Tapajara an edge in survival, allowing it to thrive in a variety of environments. Lastly, there's the tantalizing possibility that Tapajara was a social creature. Some fossil sites have revealed multiple Tapajara individuals together, suggesting they might have lived in groups in the end, each pterosaur had its unique traits, but Tapajara, with its distinctive crest and unique adaptations, truly stood out. 